Hi everybody, this is Brad Clark from Rigging Dojo. I just was answering a quick forum question and this came up with uh, how to animate constraints in the story track and uh, how to deal with that. So I'm going to go ahead and organize this a little bit. Um, the one thing I want to point out is that um, you know you could certainly do one constraint with a bunch of targets and animate the weights back and forth, but it becomes a little tricky to mix in animation with this. So I've got my setup, I've got a, just a plain sphere with no parent object. I've got three constraints that are parent-child, a throw, a catch, and uh, the other hand. So you can see that the sphere is the, parent, um, the parented object in all these. And the one thing I did was to make sure that once I snap the constraint for the offset of the hand, I then lock each constraint so that moving around or having layers um, doesn't mess up the offset, which is important. So when we get to here, I've got a, a constraint track and the animation track. So if I mute the animation track, you can see that the uh, the constraint is stuck to the hand, and then he catches it down here, and the handoff happens. All right, so if I unmute this, you can see it jump to his other hand. There we go. So those are just the constraints. Well. So I've got the constraint blending off here and fading on here, and I've got another constraint triggering. And typically, uh, because it's on the same object in the same hand, I would probably put these all on the same track so that they can crossfade correctly. Um, when you have it as a separate track, the, uh, the weight and the order that these things start getting applied in becomes important, and you sometimes have to animate the weight um, of the entire clip down and then bring the constraint on down here. Uh, so Typically, I, I won't split these off. I'll just manage all the constraints on one, one track. So that's what I'm going to show you here. Um, just remember, if you need the same objects dealing with constraints in another set of layers, then in your new constraint track, just make sure that you fade the weight off on this, this upper track. I'm going to clear that out. So basically, um, and actually I've already got one down here doing the same type of thing, so you can actually move that off and it'll still switch. So let me, let me delete that track. Okay, so to get these in here you can just pop up a navigator, filtered navigator to constraints. If I can find them. <laughs> there we go. Um, and then you can just drag them down into the constraint track. And once they overlap, they, uh, they fade. But the trick to making sure that they get messed up by story is um, making sure you lock the constraint before you drag it in there. And that should take care of some of the problems people were having. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and turn on this and I'm going to solo it so you can see what the uh, animation looks like. So this ball's got animation from story that basically starts here and it ends here. And the rest is uh, from the constraint fading. So I'm going to unsolo that and now we can just see what the end result looks like. He throws the ball, the constraint's active the whole time. We start to fade the constraint into the animation. And then we uh, want to fade in the constraint for the catch. There we go, and now it's constrained. And then uh, it basically goes back to zero because we ran out of clip, but we want it to stick to his other hand now. So I'm gonna cross fade that during the transition. And now this hand over here, I rotate this around is holding the ball so pretty straightforward but people are having trouble with the offsets not working and uh, it can be a little confusing to get them into the track and have, how to use and organize the track so uh, the nice thing is if you're if you need to animate the ball because it's the animation track is overriding the layers even though the ball is locked uh, the animation layer if we make it accept in keyframes, um, the animation layer, when it's not being constrained, you can animate it. So it's, uh, even though it's constrained and locked back in the timeline, uh, it's, it's, it's animatable. So anyway, hope that helps everybody out and gives you uh, some options on how to quickly animate constraints and blend them on and off.